Hey, how's it going, you guys? This is Pat Vladbus here, and now it's time to talk about Season 2 of Korra, Book 2, Spirits. The infamous season that I've heard a lot of bad things about. Nothing, like, spoilerish or anything. I just heard that it's not very good. And, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna talk about Episode 1. It's a two-parter, so, you know, I paused it, you know, went back, recapped the episode. Uh, so this little first episode, uh, I believe it was called Rebel Spirits. We see that... Spirits are attacking the South Pole, and I'm not really sure why. We kind of get what what could be a possible explanation. Um, we hear about this Southern Festival that's going to be happening, and we get introduced to Cora's parents again. I and mean, we saw them in flashbacks, but we get to see them now. We can see her uncle, her cousins. One of her cousins is what I call a fucking trap card, which is like a fucking or like a like, like a trap card or a trap. I say trap card because Yu-Gi-Oh, but like a trap where you have like a male character that looks like a female character and it's just like oh hey how's it going babe and it's like I'm a guy and it's like whoa like, it's a trap on some Admiral Akbar shit from Star Wars but yeah um I'm sure I'm not the only one who's come up with the term trap card for them but anyways uh they're introduced the only reason I mentioned that is because Bolin is uh talking to them and one of them wants to be with Bolin I guess so they're connected to a main character now um we see what kind of happened with each of the characters. You know, Mako's joined the police force. He's delivering, like, cheesy lines. And I like how Mako's kind of an interesting character again because he kind of went from brooding guy with a kind of a bad past with him and Bolin. He was kind of interesting. Then he just kind of became a generic nice guy and still a good character, but just kind of a generic nice guy, a little bit bland. Now he's kind of trying to do the cheesy lines. And I don't know. He's kind of being a bitch with Korra, not really telling her what she should do or shouldn't do. He's kind of being a little whipped, I guess. But you know, um, we see Bolin is still doing the pro bending with a new team that sucks. Um, Korra is air bending. She can do the air scooter. She's still learning, but um, her character does kind of bother me just a bit in this episode. But yeah, they end up going to the South Pole, and we, like I said, we meet, we get to see Boomy in full, uh, Tenzin's brother, and we get to see his sister, and Tenzin's funny in this episode. His comedy was really good, because this wasn't the best Korra comedy, honestly. Not all the jokes really hit, you know, there were funny jokes for sure, but none of them, not all of them were, you know, the best jokes that Korra's ever delivered. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a bad episode, it was just, you know... Uh, but yeah, we get like this battle with the spirits. Um, that was a cool fight. Everyone tries to do something. They not really can't do it. But then, the uncle, her uncle, who ha is very pissed off at the South for disrespecting the spirits and stuff, and you know he thinks that because of their disrespect is why the spirits are angry and why they're attacking. My dog just burst into my room. Okay. Well, anyways, I'll slow ignore that. But. Um, but he's pissed off about that, but then we see him fight the spirit later on in the episode. He just like this, like, spirit-bending type shit. That was cool. He wants to train Korra. Korra doesn't want to train with Tenzin anymore, because she thinks she's keep... He, she... Blah, blah, blah. She thinks he is keeping her in prison and not letting her go anywhere, and... Now they're gonna go to the air temples, but they're not gonna do that, because she's gonna train with this guy, and... The, her dad's completely opposed to it, and there's probably a reason why. He seems like a totally cool guy who's into the spirits and everything, but just the way he says, I'm going to give you the training you need at the end of the episode, just the way he delivers the line, just the way they hold on him before the episode cuts, a little suspicious, but it could have just been the way they executed it. But uh, all the characters seem like themselves. Um, Korra's the only one I really have a problem with. Um, let me see, what else happened in the episode? I just want to make sure... Oh, in Future Industries, uh, Asami and uh, Bo Lin, they did, like, this thing with this weird dude who's trying to invent movies. That was funny. But, yeah, that's, like, a little subplot, I guess. I don't know. Um, not very great comedy. It was okay, I guess. Um, um, Korra, though, her patience is, like, gone, and she can use the Avatar state, like, fully. My problem with the Avatar state is that it really... Does that even make sense? Because Aang had to kind of, like, bust his ass and do all this stuff with his inner chakras in order to master the Avatar state. And it has been six months since, you know, she fucking... What's it called? Uh, it's been six months since she, you know... There was a six-month time skip, so she could have unlocked those chakras and everything and all that chi and everything. I think they were called the chakras or something when Aang did it. Um, but yeah, all those got unlocked... And he mastered the Avatar state. Uh, well, he didn't master it right away because Katara and everything, but. Korra could have done those things. Oh, excuse me. But uh, well, I, we'd have to see further explanation. Maybe she did. I mean, that's totally possible that she did those things. I mean, 
you know, you're supposed to, like, not... You're supposed to forget the person you love, and she's with Mako, but, I mean, Aang still ended up with uh, Katara, so, I mean, it's not... Com I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, she has mastery over the Avatar State. Wasn't really liking that, but if there was, like, something that happened during the time skip where she unlocked it for herself, because we see her use it at the end of the first season... But it didn't really look like if she mastered it. She just kind of went into the Avatar State, did a bunch of element stuff, and then went out of it. So, you know. If she mastered it over the six months, fine. Whatever. Uh, then we have her just her overall attitude throughout the episode. It just... I won't say her character regressed. I mean, kind of. She was kind of acting like Episode 1 or 2 Korra. But I think it kind of comes from the fact that she's learned airbending now. And because of that, she might be a little cocky, you know what I mean? She has all the elements now, and she thinks she's mastered it, but she hasn't. And we'll see where it goes, but I can see a little bit of regression here, and that's not a good sign, but we'll see. I know the writers thought they were done when they did season one, and now they have to do another season, and they develop the characters, and now they're continuing, and it can get a little messy. Nickelodeon really should have just let them do three seasons or four seasons or whatever. They shouldn't have been like, oh, do a miniseries. Contain it, one season, do the whole thing. Oh, wait, wait, now, now do more, even though you already finished the story. It's like, what? Like, I can forgive some of the faults of this season because of that. There's still faults, but I can forgive some of it because that just, you know, hopefully... I've heard great things about season three, and hopefully season three is where it's like, okay, we have this planned out, here we go, you know. So hopefully season three is great, but season two, so far, first episode, so far so good. Um, yeah, like I said, comedy, a little bit of a hit and miss, wasn't as strong as the first season, but it was only the first episode. The episode overall, I'll give like a 7.5. Kara might, Kara, Cora might be regressed as a character, that's a problem. Yeah, you, know, you regress Bo Lin a little bit, you regress Sami a little bit, whatever. The main character though, eh, we'll see, but... The spirits are definitely interesting. I like their design. When the one was swimming in the water, that looked really cool. The action was great. But yeah, I'll go like 7.5. Like I said, it was a good episode of Korra. It could have been a stronger, but I mean, it's a two-parter, so we'll see how the second part goes. But yeah, uh, 7.5 for this episode, and uh, yeah. Uh, now I'll talk about the second episode of Book 2. Okay, you guys, so episode 2 of Book 2 of Korra. I mean, I guess episode 14, whatever. Um... This was a pretty good episode. Uh, we get a little bit of comedy here and there. Uh, Cora's, you know, she's with the, the brother of her dad, if not remembering his name right now, but she wants to open up this spirit portal in order so the southern lights will appear. Like, you know, you have the northern lights, and that's supposed to be the spirits doing their thing. And it's not on the south because they're disconnected. And her dad ends up going with them, and you, you know, get the, not a rivalry, but, you know, disagreements between him and his brother. And. Korra siding with uh, the uncle, which is a little weird because, you know, it's her dad, but, I mean, I guess it's, you know. And you got Mako and Bolin, and the two twins are there. That's whatever. Some funny stuff here and there, but uh, the main thing of this episode is really the flashback. Her dad was banished from the Northern Tribe, which I didn't really expect, and it was because he attacked on, like, you know, sacred spiritual ground. The spirits got pissed and attacked the temple. And, not the temple, but the, uh, well, you know, the main castle. You know, they attacked the whole northern tribe, basically, and he got banished because he was the cause of the spirits attacking, and, yeah. So she's a little pissed off at her dad for never telling her, and justifiably, um, they have this thing called the Everstorm, where everything's just, like, crazy, and they get to this really epic spirit battle with extremely good animation. So, you know, that was good. Um, the uncle's still doing his spirit bending stuff. That's always, you know, cool, I guess. Uh, what else happened in this episode? She ends up going inside, and she opens it up by entering the Avatar state and touching the portal, and the lights appear. So that's, you know, everything's happy-go-lucky. She apologizes to, uh, Mako for being kind of a bitch, which I was waiting for her to do something like that, because she's been... I want to say she's been more bitchy in these first two episodes than she was in the entire first season, maybe outside of, like, the first two episodes. So, I mean... That's a little, you know, iffy. She was never that bitchy before. And I know she's got, you know, Avatar shit to worry about. And Tenzin was stressing her out or whatever. But, yeah, she apologized, though. And that was good. Then, at the end of the episode, we see these troops coming in. And they're from the north. And they're going to the south. And they're coming in. And she's like, what's going on? And he's like, there's more to be done. And he's, red flags are starting to go up. At the very least, orange flags are going up. 
this uncle is not what he's, you know, saying he is, it seems like. Or maybe he is what he is, he's just going about it the wrong way, we'll just have to wait and see. But, uh, on the other side of the story we have the Tenzin family, and their side's pretty good, a little bit of comedy here and there. Um, the kids are being dumb, and, you know, whatever. We see more of, uh, Boomy and the sister, and Tenzin, of course. They're getting gifts from the temple they visited, they go to see the Avatar room. Uh, where all the statues are. We see the statue of Aang, and there's this other statue there that one of the daughters noticed. She goes to see it again, and it actually glows when Korra activates the lights. So that's interesting. We'll have to see what that's about. Um, he looked kind of interesting, too. It wasn't just, like, a normal statue of an avatar, like, just standing there. He had, like, this, like, thing behind him. Kind of looked like maybe a spirit or something. So, yeah, we'll see what that's about. But, uh, yeah. This, this season's called Spirits, so I'm sure opening that portal isn't, you know, he said there's more work to be done, whatever. We'll see what this uncle's up to. He seems a little uh, shady right now. Uh, let's see, comedy was pretty good in this episode. Uh, I liked it. Um, the stuff with the kids and the family with Tenzin, it was okay comedy, not the best, but uh, the comedy with Bolin was funny. Like, I like uh, just a little subtle thing where he drives up on this little uh, snowmobile and he kind of leans on it, and it kind of goes forward a little bit, and he stops it, and, you know, he's like, oh, I'm not used to it yet. It was funny because he just kind of, you know, it went forward. I, I, it's hard to explain why it was funny, but I liked that it wasn't this overblown, like, drive forward crash. You know, it wasn't this over-the-top thing. It was just like he leaned on it, kind of got all fucked up, and then he fixed it. And, I don't know, to me that was funnier than some over-the-top crashing into the cliff or whatever. He does that kind of later, but that's because the spirit's fucked with the engine, and he doesn't actually crash. He gets saved by the twins, but, uh... And they're waterbenders, and that's cool. Um, they're kind of funny. They have this monotone thing going on, but uh, we'll see where they go. They're okay so far. Not that interesting of characters, but they're kind of funny. We'll, you know, we'll see. <sighs> but yeah, the only new character that's really interesting to me is the uncle, and uh, and her dad interests me as well. But yeah, overall, um, it was a good episode. Um, not much to say. It's not the best premiere I've ever seen. It was good though. Like I said, Korra still acting a little bitchy, but she did apologize to Mako, so that's something. I don't think her character has totally regressed, but there's definitely, you know, not she's not as mature as she was at the end of the first season, which is a little problematic, but we'll see where it goes. Uh, I guess I'll give this episode like a 7.5 as well. Um, I mean, finding out the backstory for her dad was good, but he's not, he doesn't, I mean, he's probably a main character for this season maybe, but I don't think he'll be a main character overall, but we'll see. The backstory was interesting, the fighting was good, but overall it was like a 7.5 episode. So together, 7.5 for both episodes. It was a good premiere, but it wasn't anything that blew my mind. I wouldn't say it was as good as the premiere of the first. Well, uh, the first season of Korra just had more, uh, it had more fun, you know, it was more, uh, you know, seeing the city for the first time, and, you know, oh, that's Toph's daughter, and that's Aang's son, and old Katara, and the Zuko's mom joke, you know, those things really elevated it for me, but, uh, yeah, but this was a good premiere, so, you know, 7.5 for this, and so far, so good, so far, season two is, it's good so far, but we'll see where the problems really start to come in, hopefully the Love Triangle stuff, I mean, I'm sure it'll be there, it probably will be, because I know there were complaints about the Love Triangle, and I don't feel like it was intrusive enough in the first season to really be that big of a problem. It's probably going to be back in full force, and that's why people don't like it, but we'll see. Um, but I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I need to talk about. I've been pausing a lot, just trying to... Yeah, uh... Not much else to really say, so... Yeah, um, I, I did like that they were talking about, like, you know, the winter solstice and how that's when the spirit world and the regular world are more connected, and that was the stated in the original Avatar, and when you fuck with the spirit's domain, they'll attack. That was there as well, so they're not breaking any continuity. They're talking about, like, you know, this this spirit portal that was in the South Pole, and it's like, we never heard of that ever in the original Avatar, but the spirits were never like this on a grand scale in the original Avatar, so we'll just have to wait and see. But, uh, yeah, we didn't go to the spirit world too many times in the original series, so it'll be interesting to see. I mean, she has to go in the spirit world at some point in this season. There's no way she won't, and that'll always be fun, because the spirit world's always awesome in the original series. So, yeah, I'll go 7.5. Like I said, good premiere. Could have been better, but it's not bad by any means. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video. Tell me what you guys thought of these episodes in the comments below, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.